In the previous video, we looked at finding the period of a sinusoidal function from its equation. And we considered the parent function for y is equal to the sine of x, where the period is 2 pi for the parent function. And remember, the period is essentially the horizontal distance for one unique oscillation of this function. And this unique section will then be repeated infinitely many times as the x values go to positive or negative infinity. But the takeaway is that for our parent function, either the sine or the cosine, the period here would be twice pi. Now, after that, we considered what happens if we horizontally stretch or squish these sinusoidal functions. Or in other words, what happens when we take this variable on the inside here, this independent variable, and we multiply it by some constant. And we can multiply it by the constant a here. And this is the graph here when we set a equal to 2. So this is y is equal to the sine of 2x. And what we can see here is that the period was essentially cut in half. Since now notice it goes through one unique oscillation after pi units rather than 2 pi. So the period here we found out was equal to pi. It was half the period of the parent function. And lastly, we looked at what happens when we set a equal to a fraction, and we had y is equal to the sine of x over 2, or 1 half x. And we can see the period here. Actually, we have to go from this point and travel to a minimum through the midline, then back through the maximum and to the midline again. This will be one unique oscillation, and we can see that it has a horizontal distance of 4 pi, since this is 2 pi, and this is 2 pi right here. So we can say the period when this constant here, a, was 1 half, this period would be equal to 4 pi. And we can notice a pattern. We can notice that when the a value is bigger than 1, so this is the case when a is bigger than 1. Let me use a different color here. Then we get a squish. It will essentially contract the function closer to this y-axis here. Whereas when a is a fraction, when it's between 0 and 1, we get a stretch. This will horizontally stretch it, this time away from this y-axis. Now, from here, we have two main questions. What happens if our coefficient a, this constant here, is a negative number? And also, is there a formula that can determine this period based on this coefficient a? So let's first think about the formula part of it, and then we'll come back to when a is a negative value. And for the formula, we can say the formula for the period, if we continue to look at different values of a, we can look at whole numbers or fractions, then what we will see is that the formula for this period is 2 pi divided by the absolute value of that coefficient a. So this formula, we can test it. But again, you would be able to derive this formula from yourself by just looking at different values of a and comparing that to the period for that new sinusoidal function. And if we test this, since we know a is equal to 2, the period would be 2 pi over 2 here, which is just pi, which does match up with what we had. And likewise, for this one, when we find its period and we use the formula, we have 2 pi over the absolute value of a, but a is a positive number, so it's just 2 pi over a half. And we're dividing by a fraction, which is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which means the period here would be 4 pi, which is, again, exactly what we had. And likewise, if we use different values of a and actually drew their graphs in and calculated their period by hand and then compared it to the formula, we will see that they match up. So this formula is valid and quite useful 
for finding the period when given the equation. Now, like I mentioned, we can also consider what happens when our a value is negative. So let me just rewrite. We have the sine of a times x, and now we will consider what happens when a is a negative number. And let me just paste in a copy of our parent function. And from here, we can look at a special case. Let's say when a is negative 1, we'll start simple. And when a is negative 1, we have this y is equal to the sine of negative x here. And we could make a table, or we could just use the unit circle and plot the points. With the unit circle, the x value at any point on the circle is the cosine of the angle, and the y value is the sine of the angle. And this angle here is theta. Now, just to be clear, the angle here we call x. So we need to be careful with these variables here. But essentially, we're going to be putting in different values of our angle, which is either theta for this case or x in this function. And we can plot their y values. So let's start with 0. Since we know that the sine of negative 0 is the same as the sine of 0, and the sine of 0 is simply 0. So it still goes through the origin. Now if we plug in pi over 2, we're looking at the sine of minus pi over 2. And remember, negative angles go in the clockwise direction, which means we're down here on our unit circle. And the sine value at that angle, the y value on this unit circle, this is negative 1. So at pi over 2, we're down at negative 1. When we plug in pi, the sine of negative pi, that brings us to here. It's the same as the sine of pi. Both of those values are 0. When we plug in 3 pi over 2, but now we're making a negative, so that brings us all the way to the positive y-axis right here. And the sine value there, or the y value there, is 1. And we can finish with 2 pi and the sine of minus 2 pi. That just brings us all the way back to our starting point where we know the y value here is 0. And if we draw this in, what we can see is that it essentially gave us a mirror image about this x-axis, but we need to be a little bit careful since this could also be generated with the negative of the sine of x, which we saw when looking at the amplitude. We would also get this exact same curve. But the main difference is that when horizontally stretching or squishing the function, or in other words, when multiplying the independent variable, this affects the function horizontally. So we actually get a reflection about the y-axis here. Though, like I mentioned, it looks identical to the reflection about the x-axis. They just, in this case, happen to look the exact same. But the main takeaway is that this is a reflection. So let me say it like this. We have a reflection about the y-axis. And just to be clear, it is technically reflected about the x-axis as well. But in general, horizontal stretching or horizontal scaling causes reflections about the y-axis if the a value is negative. And this will be true of any negative a value. It will reflect it about the y-axis, and if it's bigger, or we can say more negative a values, that will just then affect the period more. So higher negative values of a will essentially squish the function in, just like we saw with higher values of positive a, the period will become smaller, and with fractional values of a, we saw the period become bigger, so with negative fractional values of A, we would see the period become bigger, but it would also have this reflection about it. Now, one final point that we need to clarify is this formula for the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of A. And we need the absolute value since making this negative doesn't affect the period at all. It just causes this reflection about the y-axis, but the period will not actually change. In fact, if we considered y is equal to the sine of 2x and y is the sine of minus 2x and plotted those points, we would see in both of these cases 
that the period is pi. The negative sign does not affect the period, which is why we're dealing with the absolute value of whatever that coefficient is.